John 11, verse 1, 2, take verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, and verse 4. And I flip down to another verse. Are we all there? John 11, verse 1. Now, a man named Lazarus was sick. Today, every sickness shall be healed. Today, every sickness shall be healed. You hear me? Today, every sickness shall be healed. If you came here with any sickness, because he rose, that sickness shall leave your body. Shall leave your body. If you have anybody at home who is sick, you can stand the cat for them. Hallelujah. He said, now a man named Lazarus uh, was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Verse 2. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was uh, the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her head. Verse 3. So the sister said word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. Verse 4. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. That challenge will not end in death. Amen. That challenge will not end in death. Amen. Hear me, ladies That challenge will end for the blood of God. Amen. Why am I saying that? I have, a, I have a point of reference. He said, it will not end in death. He said, not. He said, no. It is for God's glory. So that God's Son, who is called Jesus, may be glorified. Are we together? And let's go down to verse number, verse number 25. Uh, the sickness is not on to death. Uh, it is because it's for the glory of the Son of God. Verse 25. Uh, and Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live, even though he dies. Verse 26. And whoever lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Ask them, ask someone, never do you believe this? Never believe this. Say, never do you believe this? Do you believe in Jesus? I'm teaching on the subject, he's alive. Someone say, he's alive. He's alive. Someone say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Say, never. Jesus is alive. Say, never. Jesus is alive. They thought by killing him that ended his life. No, they ended the physical life. They didn't end the life of the Father in him. They killed him. Now they thought they have killed the, 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 the mission. Yes, they killed the flesh. Because the Bible said, unto dust man came. Unto dust the flesh will return. So the flesh had to return back to God. But the life of God in the Son was made manifest. And he is alive. And we shall live him in the house. Yeah. So we say, Jesus is alive. Jesus is alive. Say, Jesus is alive. <laughs> the story we read from, uh, we see a scenario, a picture of a man called Lazarus. He died. He was sick and died. Hallelujah. And here, here comes a scenario which none of us want to encounter. How to tell That's what I said before. Anyone in your household that has organized now an obituary spiritually, Father, that obituary shall not stand. Amen. 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 Uh, there are some people who organize death in the spiritual realm before the harvest is gathered. I want to pray. Anyone that has gone far to organize an obituary against somebody in the family, Lord, I stand in the name of Jesus. That obituary shall not stand. Amen. It shall not come to pass. I cancel it spiritually. Amen. But the Lord, I cancel it. I cancel it. I cancel it. I hijack it. It shall not stand. Let your name rise and turn in the hell. That obituary shall not stand. Because Jesus lives. And the Bible says, uh, even the neighbors, uh, uh, they have come to condone, knowing that the matter has ended. I will tell you. So it didn't just happen for Lazarus. And in verse 25, all hope was gone until when Jesus came. Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. And don't give up on Jesus. He's the only one that can resurrect your hope. When, when, when hope is alive, things will be manifest in due time. When hope is dead, all is gone. But ladies and gentlemen, sometimes even when hope is gone, but when Jesus is present, he can make any dead thing to come back to life. We saw in the case of Lazarus, it was already concluded. I don't know why they are concluding your case. Father, because you rose and you're living, that challenge shall 
shine in your victory. Amen. Shout out for your glory. 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 In the name of Jesus. He says, and, and, and they, they already concluded. And Jesus came out and said, Woman, listen to me. You don't understand the things of the Spirit. Neither do you understand that I am God Almighty. You may think I am just Lazarus' friend. Yes, the one whom you love is a true. But I am not a man who can lie. I am not a man who can repent of my word. I am God because, uh, because in me all things are yea and amen. I am, the, I am the embodiment of God the Father. I am the expression of God the Father. If you see me, you have seen the Father. So woman, which means that it is not just a carnal person standing, it is God himself who is around. When Jehovah is in town, uh, the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Even though things may have died, he has the potency and the ability to resurrect things in your life. I pray this afternoon, because he rose from the grave. Whatever was declared dead in your life, I declare lying. I declare lying. I declare life. I declare life. Whatever they have killed spiritually, any good thing that has died in your life by the resurrection of the Holy Ghost, as I pray now, it must resurrect. 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 He says, uh, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection. I am not just a friend of Lazarus. I am the resurrection. He did not say, I am the one that resurrects people. He didn't say, I am the one that makes people up. He, the Bible didn't say, I am the one that resurrects people. He said, no, I am the resurrection. So when I enter you, you leave. Are you getting the picture? Yes, you didn't get the picture. <laughs> All right. In the, the second thing, says something. It says, when they went to bury in the village, they went to bury a man who was dead. And they saw a band of robbers coming. So they were afraid of the band of robbers. What did they do? They, they were just close to Elisha's tomb. Elisha. And they threw the man in the tomb and they ran away. So <laughs> they were carrying a dead man concluding the case. I don't know who is carrying you spiritually. And they have concluded. Because he rose today, you must leave. And they have concluded that we are going to bury him. We are going to bury her by the power in the name of Jesus. That will be 20. I cancel it. I cancel it. I cancel it. I cancel it. A sevenfold amen. Two, three, four, five, six, number seven. They carried him, which means that the villagers already concluded that he's a dead man. Yes, if there is death, there's also something called life. Are we together? The villagers never experience life. They experience only death. Here comes an example that in the fiscal, where the Bible says, they threw the man in Elisha's tomb. As they were running, the man also took up and the man was running. Why? Because the Bible says, as soon as the man's body touched Elisha's bone, which means that they are not in the bone of Elisha to resurrect a dead man. One more of the one who is called the resurrection. And the man rose up without prayers, without fasting. I pray for someone this afternoon. Because he rose. Father, whatever has been kept, whatever has been kept in the grave, Lord, by the power in the name of Jesus, I command the grave to open and vomit it. 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 Someone shall believe him in the hell. He is alive. Then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live. Out here. He who believes in me will live. So, what am I talking about this afternoon? Jesus Christ is alive. So, they killed him thinking they have killed the author of life. But, as a matter of fact, they made us to become born again to his death. They pushed up to the place of having eternal life to his death. Because when you believe in him who died and rose again, 
You have eternal life. You are saved. You are born again of the Spirit of God. I will tell you. So we see a case where Jesus cannot do that. If you believe in me, you will live. Because I am the one who is life. I died, yes. As one of my did that, he gave his life. It was Hallelujah. Jesus Christ offered himself. Nobody could kill him. Can anyone kill God Almighty? No, no sir. Even the grave could not hold him captive. Hear me this the grave has power. Yes, that's true. And the grave works with the spirit of death. If there's no spirit of death, there's no power of the grave. They won't hang him. Okay. So even the grave could not hold him captive. Why? He's the author of death. By him, all things were created. For him and by him. He has all authority over them. So in the case of Lazarus, when he came, he already concluded. And he said, Woman, I am the reservation. Listen, everyone. Because he died. When he died, the hope of the disciples was shattered. Because even though they listened to him, something believed in him. When Jesus died, some were scattered. Why? Because they know now persecution will come. And they never understood. He said, Look, I, I I shall, you, you shall destroy this temple and after three days I shall build it again. He was telling them one day I shall pass away, I shall hand over my life for your salvation, for the salvation of your soul. I shall hand it over. No one can take his life. He is gone by himself. He offered himself on the cross of Calvary. They didn't kill him, he offered himself for the mission of the Father to come to pass. Salvation. That all men may know him. And come to the grace, saving grace of the Lord Jesus. So the mission mandate of Christ's saving soul came to pass because he died. He offered the reason why Jesus came is to save our sins, save our souls from sin. Is that true? Yes. Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. He said he, he, his name shall be called Jesus because he shall save his people from their sins. That's why he came. So he needed to die to say it is finished. I have completed my own mandate, Father, Lord of Father. Now they can be born again. Now anyone who believes in me will be born again. And now anyone who believes in me will not live. Sorry, will not die, will live. Will live how? We have the same life I have. The life of the Father. Anyone who believes in me. Even though he dies physically, the flesh may die, but the spirit man will still live. Out here. Shall we open to John chapter number? John chapter number 20. Are we all? John 20, verse number 22. Verse, verse 20 and 22. John chapter 20. John 20, verse 21 to 22. Hallelujah. First of all, let's, go, let's take verse 17. They will bring Matthew to verse 16. Verse uh, 21. Sorry. Verse 17. Let's take verse 17. John 20, 17 says, Jesus said, Do not hold me, for I have not yet returned to the Father. Do not contaminate me. Don't touch and contaminate me, because I have a report to present before the Father. Don't contaminate me, because I have to offer my blood unto the throne of Jehovah. Hebrews 9, 22. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. Woman, don't touch me because I have a report, I have an account to give to my father in heaven. Woman, don't touch me. How to you? And he says, verse 17 again. Ah, he said, I, I return to my father. He said, Go instead and tell my brothers and tell them, I am returning to, the, to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Verse number 21. Again, Jesus said, verse number 21, again, Jesus said, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me. I am sending you, verse 22, uh, and with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Shall we go to the next uh, verse, verse number 31? Verse 31. Verse 31. It says, But these are written that you may believe. Again, believe is important. Believe that Jesus Christ is is what is what 
is the Son of God. Some say the Messiah, some say is the Christ, the Son of God. And that, by believing, you may have life in His. In Him. So, anyone that does not believe in Jesus does not have life. Now, follow me, let's go. And the Bible says that a woman shall give birth to a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. So, Mary was just favored to put to bed a son called named Jesus Christ. She was favored. Thou are highly favored. This is from the most high. I bring you greetings. And you get me. I will tell you. Now, the life of Christ on earth tells us that even though we are going through challenges, he understands what we go through. He also went through these things. Christ went through hunger. He went through rejection. He went through accusation. When, when, when it was a miracle, they have been accusing that he's a son of the devil. They accused him for the miracles. How it together? But he never mind. He focused on the things of the kingdom of God, on his mission. Friends, until you understand your mission, you're not to focus on life. Can I repeat it? Until you understand your mission, you will never be focused in life. You see, Jesus was focused because he understood his mission. And every mission goes through time. Because one day you shall leave this earth and stand before God and give an account. So was I here? So was I here? So the Pharisees, the Pharisees that never wanted a man who is honest. There are some of our friends who are Pharisees. There are some of our friends who are Sadducees. There are some of our friends who are the Nicolaitans. There are some of our friends who are Jesus. Someone said, talk to me. Talk to me, sir. Someone to me. So the Pharisees uh, never loved the truth. But Jesus says, whether you love the truth or not, I have come to present the truth. I myself, I am the truth. So in me, there's no darkness. In me, there's no light. I have come to present the truth about the mission I God sent me. And remember, I am the Son of God. Say, ah. He even calls himself the Son of God. Number one crime. He said, God Almighty is my father. He said, look at number two cry. He's calling the Almighty his father. How we together? Then look at where he came from. Is this not Joseph's son making this noise? His mother, his mother is Mary. <laughs> she has no job, by the way. The father just a carpenter. How much does he make? Oh, I remember Joseph. The man that fixed my chair and spoiled it. That's the son. Ah. Is it? He's rejecting the father, saying that his father is now God Almighty, not Joseph. Joseph, we don't know. They thought they understood him. But they never understood that this is he was the author of life. The Pharisees were expecting for a Messiah. Not knowing that he's already there with them. Not that he's there the parent prayer for the kingdom is an hand. I am the kingdom of God, so I am, I am an hand. I am here to repent and enter me. When you repent and enter me, I will enter. Does it make sense to you? When you repent, we repent to enter the kingdom of God. Is that true? Yes, so when you repent from your sins, you enter the kingdom of God by the grace and the mercy of God. Now, the one called grace and mercy enters you. Remember, he's called grace and mercy, Christ himself. When he enters you, he gives you the love of the Father. So they never understood what he was saying. He's making his himself equal to God now. This is an abomination unto us. He must kill this man. Are we together? Uh, to make matter worse, uh, the laws of Moses says uh, the servant must be kept. I agree with you, sir. And God created man on the same day, on the seventh day, God rested. And Jehovah says, He said in the word, in the word He said, On the Sabbath day, you shall not walk, just have rest. He's arrested. So the Pharisees now, they were in further than even God Almighty. And Jesus asked them, was Sabbath created for man or man created for the Sabbath? That's a tough question. Are we together? Yes. <laughs> he answered, was Sabbath created for man or man was created for the Sabbath day? Now, I hear the man on Sabbath. Is it the bad thing I did? No, but the law says you're not supposed to. The law says you're not supposed to. The law says, and, 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 and they could not understand that he is the embodiment of the law and grace together. 
Is that the reality? <laughs> they could not comprehend the embodiment of the law and rules. That's why you see, when the woman was caught in the very act of adultery, they brought him to Jesus to test him. Let's prove this man that he's wrong. Let's prove him that he's foolish. We are the Pharisees. We have the law. We know the law. Let's prove the man that is saying that his father is God. He's the son of God. Let's go and prove him. Pam, they went to him. Sir, we respect you. Sir, we respect you. Sir, we respect you. But now let's look at this. Let's read it together. Are we together? As I said, come, let's reason together. This woman was caught in the very act. And in the book of Moses, the law of Moses is here. When you are you're caught in adultery, you are stoned to death. What do you say? Were they wrong? Were, were they wrong? They were not wrong. Were they right? Oh. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. We say God the Father. I say God the Holy Ghost. I say God the Father. I say God the Son. We say God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. I say God the Father. I say God the Son. I say God the Holy Ghost. God the Holy Ghost. When they wrong or when they right? They were wrong. It was written in the books that whoever is caught in adultery should be stoned to death. Were they wrong or right? They were right. Uh, they were right. Don't confuse us. I come to a law. Is that true? So sometimes, man, I come to a law. The law was taken. And, and you don't break the law, they went according to the law. But they, but they refused to understand that there's a place that the law ends. They never told them where the law will end. So Jesus came as a bridge between the law and grace. So as soon as they met Jesus, the law ended. Let's begin. So he said, now let's talk. Is this one right? Are we right or wrong? Should we stop now? He said, no. he said, he said, because he understood that they were there to test him. Remember, he's omnipresent, he's omnipotent, he's God by himself. Then the Bible says, he began to write on the floor, changing the law to grace. Who won by law, you will be stoned to death. But because I am the grace of God, we shall live. Today, whoever is planning to marry you, they will go down for your sake. They will go down for your sake. For your sake, they will go down. The name of Jesus. So, with all of these things, they said this man must not live. Because he's changing everything. He's putting the nation upside down. He has brought another kind of doctrine. His second confession. We grew up in the letters. We grew with the letters and in the letters. And Jesus says, yes, you grew in the letters. You grew with and in the letters, yes. But remember the letter keep it. But the spirit gives life. The letter is killing you people. Because at the point in time, the letter ought to be translated into the spirit. And I have come that the grace might change the letter into the spirit called grace. Therefore, woman, where are your accusers? Anyone who is guiltless, cast the stone. And the Bible says, all the men, nobody could. Why? Because under the law, they themselves were guilty. Mm -hmm. I will tell you. So now they went away that he has said this woman, which means that he doesn't obey the law of Moses. We have to kill this man. We have to kill this man. And the Bible says, they can't go against him. They never knew that it was the plan of the Almighty. That salvation may spring forth. That the lost souls may be saved through his death and resurrection. And the Bible says, they went and uh, see, they went and came up and said, this man shall go down. Hear me. There is no outsider that will get you except an insider that gives that information. 
they could not know. They planned against Christ, and when they got there, they could not identify him. How come? He took an insider to give information, to identify. I pray for somebody here. Anyone in your house that is identifying with you spiritually, hear me? And they can sit in their covenant and they say, I know this one. I identify with this one. Anyone in their covenant, on their altar, that is identifying a mark on you. Father, let that mark burn by fire. Burn by fire. Burn by fire. That hand that is used to point at you in the spiritual realm. I pray, let that hand wither. Jesus. 
something. He said in John, while they were rushing to the tomb to go and see, they were contemplating, what shall we do with this body? What shall we do? And the Bible says, uh, when they got in there, they saw two angels. This, from this very day, may angels be manifest to you. May angels appear to you. May angels appear to you. And the Bible says, when Mary saw him, she was happy because news had gone that he has his dead and the place in the tomb is his over. And when she came, she saw him. She wanted to embrace him. Uh, he said, no, don't touch me. I have to go first to my father. So he didn't just die and he's alive. Hallelujah. Every destiny that is held in any cage right now, any destiny in any corner, any destiny held in the grave, any destiny held on any altar, by the power in the one who died and resurrected, in the name of Jesus. That altar, I set them on fire. I set them on fire. We are looking at 
at the ascension of Christ, he lives. I'm not looking at the process. I'm looking at the end factor, he lives. The end factor, he lives. And he's alive. And he's coming back. Jesus is coming back. I have to this with he's coming back. Yeah. I say he's coming back. Yeah. Now, the fall of the mentality, some people are, are, have gone as far, they have gone far to even make something called Easter egg. Are we aware of that? They have made Easter egg. What has egg got to do with your salvation? What has egg got to do with the resurrection of my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? What has egg got to do? If egg has something to do, means the farmers will get more fish deeper. Because the farmers will stay. I will tell you. Anyone who imports you for me should be very well for spiritual and for spiritual. Because they produce egg. So they are making more of the resurrection of my Lord and Savior. It's a matter of time and chance. You stand before the judgment seat. Instead of reverencing the one who died for you and paid the price and accepting him and living according to his standard, they are making fun and making Easter egg. That's the level where church has derailed from the things of Jehovah. Church has delayed. Delayed. Believe has delayed. So what Christians have delayed. Now, what, please listen to me. Have you seen in the Bible, what, have you seen in the Bible anything called Easter egg? So, so why do you believe people? Why do you go by human doctrine or human standard? Why not on what Jesus is saying? Why not the word of God? It is written. Why not? Why not? Hallelujah. So it calls us that to the place of understanding why Jesus resurrected. Why he resurrected. Why the Father brought him on. Why? It's for our own salvation. But the question is, do you believe or are you really saved? Are you saved? Are you saved? We might say, Happy Easter, Happy Easter, very good. Happy Easter, very good. He rose. Jesus must rise up in your heart. Before your soul can be born again. You didn't get me. Until when Jesus resurrects in your heart, your soul is not saved. I'm told. Until Jesus resurrects in your heart, resurrects in your heart, your soul is not yet saved. He resurrected that the soul, the winning soul, may live. In that soul can only believe. We are celebrating Easter, beautiful. Christ resurrected, beautiful. But has Jesus resurrected in your heart? For two, two be told. Has he? Because your lifestyle will show. What you say, how you, your speech will show. If really he has, he's in your heart and he's resurrected, truly. Your speech will show. Your way of life will show. How you interact will show. Do we understand the mystery of resurrection of Jesus Christ? Or we are just moved by celebrations? Christ is not moved by celebration, He's moved by relationship with Him. Can I repeat it? Christ is not moved by celebrations because many celebrations is out of the celebration. For a celebration to be productive, Christ was invited. Okay. Ah, the Bible says in John 2, the wedding in Canaan became beautiful at the end. Why? Christ was invited. He was invited to the So when you invite him, you come into your heart. When you invite him in that church, you come to the church. Who we need is Christ. He's waiting for you to invite him into your life that he may come. And the Bible says, when he came in, he performed wonders by turning water into the best wine they've ever tasted. Which means that if your life has been battered and shattered, if you can invite Jesus, your life can be recreated by the one called Jesus Christ. If your friends are making a monkey of your life, your life can still be a life of celebration. If you can open up your heart and invite Jesus, and the Bible says, uh, they ask, where did you keep this wine? Where? He said, no one in the past, the best wine is served first. No, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jesus said, the last can be the first and the first can be the last. Ladies and gentlemen, they, uh, they ask him, where did you bring this wine from? It is very nice. And uh, the, the man who owned the party was even confused uh, because he didn't understand. Ladies and gentlemen, he never knew that somebody placed an invitation for.
from Christ to Paul. When Christ came in, there was a difference in the occasion. Uh -huh. and the Bible says, when Jesus is present, he can do the unbelievable. When he's present, listen to me, because we men, men are limited. Then when he came in, he said, pour the water, pour the water, pour the water. And, and the mother came and said, look, don't ask him any question. Just believe and do it. Just believe and do it. Obey and do it. And they obeyed and they believed. They obeyed and believed. And the water turned to wine. And the marriage was very good. Why? It speaks of a marriage, a union. Christ wants to have a union with you. In your heart. Not in care. To Mr. Doctor. Christ wants to have a union with you in your heart. Not in care. But do you believe in him? Do you believe in him? Do you believe in Jesus Christ? Or do you believe, or, or you believe in your skills? The church has failed a lot. Pastor Bible said that. Because we don't yet understand the person of Christ Jesus. We have not understood the place of the Son of God. Nor of the Holy Ghost. If you understand what, what the kingdom of God is all about, we will be full of power. The signs and miracles, the wonders, will be everywhere, everywhere. But because we don't believe in Him that much, we believe in ourselves and our systems. So we put this the way we think it can work for us. Ladies and gentlemen, this may not work for you the way you place it, but rather you might trust each other. Christ is the one that can make things work in your life because He created you. Your systems may not help you, only Christ can help you. So he, he's, he's alive to help you today. You are alive that he may help you today. But the life you are living is not your life. It's the life of Christ. Are we together? Yes, sir. That's how we together. Yes, sir. That's why every living soul must pursue. Why? The, the life in that soul is not the soul's own life. It's the life of Christ. Church heaven. Christ is alive. And he's coming back. Christ is coming back. I say he's alive. I say it's alive. Amen. I say it's alive. Amen. I say it's alive. Amen. And it's coming back. Amen. He's alive. Amen. And it's coming back. And so when Mary was rushing to the tomb, as she was asking herself, who will roll away the stone for me to enter? I don't know who's listening to me this afternoon. You have been asking this question. Who will open me that door for me to enter? You have been asking this question. Who will open me that door for me to go to another country? You have been asking questions. Who opened me that door for me to get married? I come to tell you this afternoon. The solution is in Christ. I pray this afternoon. Any door, any gate that I've been standing, that I've been erected uh, to derail you, to stagnate you by the power and the name of Jesus, let that gate be on fire. 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 They are physical gate and they are spiritual gate. And many was asking, uh, who the master is in there. Who knows the other stone that we may see him? That I may see. And as they were talking, and when they got there, the stone was already rolled by an angel. I pray this afternoon. Let the angels of God roll away every evil stone on your way. Let the angels of God roll away every evil stone on your way. Let the angels of God open any evil door that has shut good things away from your life. By the power and the name of Jesus, let them open that door. Let your career as a rain. Whenever they bury your destiny, 
Whatever they're burying your stuff, your money, your business, whatever they're burying you in the spiritual realm, have they buried in the cemetery? By the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Right now, I decree resurrection. 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 Have they put a mark on you and they say you're not, you're not getting married. By the power in the name of Jesus. That mark, I cancel that mark.
They give belief, they give you. So I say, woman, don't try in here. Rather, let's join faith and you see what my God can do. Say, okay, believe, let's go. Please don't go there and cry. I don't have time to waste. We enter the mortuary three of us. We have to go and meet the doctor in charge. The man from Sudan. Good day, sir. How are you fine? And blah blah blah. Okay, fine. Now, how can I help you? Now, this woman, the okay, bring her ID. She gave her ID. Okay, they record it down. They say, okay, my daughter is here. Can you give the name? They give us the check. They call the attendant, the motor attendant. The chief, yes, oh, yes, she's there, yes. Uh, please, I want to pray for her. And, and I ask them, I ask them there, have you ever seen somebody who died and, uh, and, and, and woke up and is living and rose up? They say, for where? It doesn't happen. I said, I have come to show you that I have a God. They say, proof. Someone say, proof. Someone say, proof. I wonder we need to this. Why? Jesus Christ never fails. The word of God is here and here. I want to act on the word of God. Be your first God. I said, okay, please, I said, give me five minutes. And see what my God will do in this place. It will be history. Please give me five minutes. Check the time. Doctor said, okay, go okay. in. With the motor attendant. I entered with a woman and practiced and motor attendant. He was in front of the attendant. I was behind him. Friends, when you enter that place, unless when you're a witch or a wizard, you will repent. I didn't hear an amen in the house. Amen. Oh, yeah, amen, I didn't hear an amen in the house. Yeah. I didn't hear that amen from you. Yeah. <laughs> when you enter that place, if you are not a witch or a wizard, you will repent. The atmosphere itself speaks of something else. When we enter, <laughs> I said, Today, Jesus, you trust me. Paul, I was fooling the down my Bible. I held my Bible. Don't say the word. And that's what I was fasting that day. I didn't know how. He went and got, okay, okay, he checked it, okay, check, okay, okay. The formalin there can choke him. I said, today, this nation will know that Jesus is alive. Today they will know. And I meant it. I meant it. Even to pray protocol, I was ready for that. And he now went first one, two, second one, two. It's just like drawers. You know the drawers for clothes. You draw like this, brrr, you check, bam, draw on the brrr, they are all straight like this, packed, four, five, and one, you put on the sizes, back, brrr, he opened back, she was on top, straight, on to dust, monkey. Please, accept Jesus Christ. Accept him. You may not understand what I'm She was almost 23, 24 years old. Naked! What did she do? I'm coming here. I said, Father, I, she said, yeah, that's my daughter. Father, I thank you. The guy, the guy just closed the thing, bam. Not up to 30 seconds. I grabbed the guy there. He said, friend, don't do this. Open that thing. And there were cameras all around. Remember, this is national mutual. National, national mutual. Which means that <laughs> that's a judicial matter now. I said, please, he told me five minutes. He said, no, 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 friend, no, 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 finish, finish. You, 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 you see, finish, you see, finish. I said, no, I said, oh, five minutes. Doctor said five minutes, open. He said, no, 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 and he was going out. I began to cry. I said, oh, what do you think we should have a general class? Are we together here? I said, are we together? So, Jesus Christ has ability to raise the dead. I went there for his glory.
but not the laws of the nation. Someone say hallelujah. Someone say hallelujah. I get to pronounce this afternoon. Whatever was killed in your life, make up a satire. I command life in trade. Life in trade. Life in trade. Life in trade. And the Bible says, the one, the same one called Jesus, when he got to the tomb, and everything was concluded, they said Lazarus is dead. Even by now, he must be smelling. Jesus said, don't worry about the order. I can give you a new order. When life comes into you, there's a new aroma. And, uh, and the Bible says, he stood there and shouted, Lazarus, come forth. Why? The one who is lying, call somebody who will take back to life. The one who is resurrection, call him. I pray this afternoon. Where is your Lazarus? I call him, come forth. Okay. Ready? 